Income Tax 2021-2022 Income Tax Software Example Who Qualifies as Your Dependent Get ready to get refunds to the max Diving in to Income Tax Here we are in our Lacert Tax Software If you don't have access to this software or any tax software, that's okay You might want to get access to a PDF file of the Form 1040 Which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov The tax software helping us to enter the data a little bit more quickly Jumping on over to the 1040, running different scenarios We're going to start off with our baseline scenario That being our single filer, Adam Smith, living in Beverly Hills, 90210 We got the 100000 on the W-2 wages we're going to assume and the 12550 for the standard deduction being taken that getting the taxable income to the 87450 we can mirror that in our Excel worksheet here for example 100,000 on the income we're going to say the standard deduction is going to be for a single filer 12550 and we're going to give the tax down here that will be calculated by the system so we're at the 87450 taxable income 87450 jump into page two tax calculated at the 1515 so we're going to go back on over here put that in our excel worksheet for the baseline 15015 and so there's our starting uh, point and we don't have anything that we put down here in the payments at this point so we got the tax liability going all the way down tax due at that point based on that calculation so now let's go on back to the first page let's add a dependent now let's add a dependent and say we're going to say the son is going to be added a straightforward kind of dependent situation sam smith uh, 2019 so it's going to be a qualifying child son lived for the 12 month time frame so meeting that test let's go on back to the forms then and back to the first page and we're going to say okay single filer we've got our dependent now here sam smith 444 social security number son checked off here for the child tax credit because they're going to qualify there therefore credit for other dependents not checked because you're typically going to have either or of these two items and it's a qualifying child here sam is so if we then scroll back down we got the same starting point but the major benefit generally being on the second page where we're talking about the credit that could be involved for the qualifying child so in this case, we have it here at the 2350, and you can get more detail on that credit on form or schedule 8812. 8812 is going to be here. So there is the schedule for the qualifying child. Now we're gonna go into the schedule in a lot more detail in future presentations because we're just looking at the qualifications for the dependent, but the major benefit that you would get would of course be if it was a qualifying child, the, the uh, credit for the qualifying child. Now let's do the same for the married filing joint, which is gonna change kind of the income the income threshold because now you're gonna have, in essence, two people. We'll keep it at the 100,000 on income. So let's say Adam gets married to Eve. Adam says, Madam, I'm Adam. And they meet when they meet and then they get married. So married filing joint here, Adam and Eve. We're gonna go back then to the uh, forms. So now we've got married filing joint. We still got the one dependent, Sam. We're gonna keep it at the 100,000 of income. 25,100 is now going to be the standard deduction not being affected by the child in this case. And we're gonna be picking it up over here. 25,100 on our item here. This is gonna be equal to the married deduction. We can verify then the 75,900. I'm gonna remove the tax and let the system calculate the tax. So if I go back on over 74,900, matching out 74,900, going to page two to calculate the tax at 8,593, we can mirror that here, 8,593. And so then I'm gonna go back down and we've got our, our refundable tax credit. Notice it's different now. And basically that's because of the, the income threshold now with two individuals. So there's gonna be some income phase out basically that will take place. There also could be a refundable portion and so on that we're gonna to have to take into consideration. We'll talk more about that later, but just right here, we're looking at the dependents and one of the major kind of components that would be involved would be whether or not you're gonna have the child tax credit and then we'll get into the advanced payments, refundable portion, phase outs and whatnot when we talk more about the child tax credit uh, itself. Now, of course, you could have more than one dependent. So if we had two dependents, for example, now we've got the married filing joint, Adam and Eve living in Beverly Hills, 90210. We've got the two dependents down here. 
and so this one I put son, daughter, daughter, but in any case, we're gonna say they're qualifying children here. So qualifying children, and then you, you probably want to make sure that you get the right thing, uh, or that could that could upset <laughs> the client here. But in any case, shouldn't have an impact on our calculation. We're gonna go to then to the second page, and we're gonna say now you have an impact, of course, on uh, the credit, which is gonna be one of the major kind of impacts that you would have. So now let's run a scenario where basically it's still a son here. So we're now still married, filing joint, Adam and Eve. We now just have one uh, dependent, that being a related, a, qualif a child. But the child is over the age limit of uh, 19. So now we're going to say if they're over 19 and they're not then a qualifying student, then they're still going to they're going to get a credit, but not the child tax credit. You're going to get possibly the credit for other dependents which would be on page two here. So we can see then on page two, the benefit a lot lower dollar amount, generally the non-refundable child tax credit or the other dependents. And you can see schedule 8812 for more detail. We'll get into that a little bit uh, more in the future. But again, that's the major component or difference or change that you would see with the dependents. Now, what if that child was around 20 or 21, but they're also a full-time student? So in other words, we're going to say we're going to say that they didn't live with the taxpayer at this point in time. And we're going to say that there's still a, uh, the son here, child living with the taxpayer, child not living with the taxpayer. If we go back on over to Sam, uh, the son here, you can you've got to make sure that you take into consideration the age limitation or the age tests. So if you say if you say that the son is going to be over that 19 limit, then you could say, well, they got to be under 19 in general or under age 24 if they're going to be basically a student at the same point. So, for example, if we say that uh, that Sam was born in uh, 2000, then we're going to keep the son. We're going to keep it here at lived uh, months, lived at home at 12 months. Child living with the taxpayer will keep it at that and then the uh, earned income credit when applicable. Now in order, order to qualify as a qualifying child here, I'm gonna put that they were the student age uh, 19 to 23 in order to qualify under the qualifying child. If they didn't qualify under the qualifying child and they still lived at the home for the 12 months, then they may still qualify for the other, uh, the, the other dependent uh, in that case as well. So then if we go back on over, we're going to go back on over to the forms and say, okay, now we got Sam at the sun and they're a qualifying child, but they're going to be over the threshold. So you got the different age thresholds. So remember it was 19 to be a qualifying child or 24 if a student, but there's another age test, which I believe was 18 to see if they're going to be qualifying for the, basically the child tax credit. So now, now they're going to be qualifying as a dependent qualifying child, but you're still only going to get the, the credit for the other dependents on page two. So if I go to page two, then we've got the credit for the other dependents coming from schedule 8812. We might talk more about that in the future, but we're basically just kind of focusing in on the dependents at this point in time. We'll get into more of the nuances with the credits at a future point. So now let's say, for example, we have Sam here who, who was uh, 1985 date of birth. And we're gonna say the relationship is just other in terms of the relationship te test, but they lived with a taxpayer, us, the Smiths here for 12 months. And they probably would have a different last name if it was someone other than a related person. But we're gonna say other for the dependent other than a child, we're gonna say, and then when applicable. So we're gonna go back on over here and say now we're talking about a dependent here which we're assuming we're not related to them but they're living within our household and we possibly then would have the credit for the other dependents but they would have to qualify in that instance for uh, the the non uh, relation test which would include having a very low income level and uh and having half of the support test being met as well the income threshold being below, I believe, the 4,300 of the earned income in that instance. And so again, you'd have the other credit. You wouldn't get the child tax credit. That would be then calculated on uh, page two here. So the general, the general idea as you think about this and go through the questionnaire, is someone gonna be a qualifying child? And if they're a qualifying child, are you gonna get the child tax credit? If not, do they still qualify for uh, the a qualifying child possibly without the child tax credit to get the other credit. And if they're not a qualifying child, do you, could you still qualify 
as a as a uh, a qualifying relative or your dependent. In other words, the qualifying relative could include, or it was very broad, and could include any person uh, other than your spouse who lived with you uh, all year as a member of your household. If your relationship didn't violate local law, if the person didn't live with you for the required time, you could see the exceptions to that rule as well.